I ended my series on Masquerade by asking why aren't you watching Dragon Gate? So your question might be, how do I watch Dragon Gate? Here's the quick and dirty answer first. To watch Dragon Gate's main content, you want their streaming service Dragon Gate Network at dragongate.live. The network includes eight annual pay-per-views, at least one major show a month at Korokin Hall in Tokyo, where major story development happens, and several monthly touring shows around Japan where they build major feuds. It's 1,650 yen per month, which at the time of this video is 11 and change in US dollars, or 15 Canadian, just under 10 British pounds, 11 and a half euros, 17 Australian, 22,000 Vatican lira, or whatever your currency is. Don't subscribe later in the month. Subscriptions renew on the first of the month no matter what, and that's midnight on the first, Japan standard time. Get to the content fairly quickly, because they take it down a week after live streaming, edit the footage, then put it back up as a shorter episode of Dragon Gate Infinity later on. Now, here's your free stuff. You'll want to follow three YouTube channels and two Twitter accounts, unless you're a network subscriber, and then you can ignore these first two. For YouTube, the Dragon Gate Network YouTube channel posts the first match of every network show for free. They usually position a really good match at the top of the card to sell the network, so you'll almost always get a banger. The second one you want to follow is Gaura Sports. They post other wrestling promotions and sports footage too, but in their Dragon Gate category they frequently release big title matches and feud blow-offs with a montage summarizing the story. The third one to follow is Dragon Gate Japan, which posts free matches from house shows several times a month. These usually aren't mandatory watches, but they're often full of character development, tournament matches, minor storylines, and rookie debuts. For Twitter, you definitely want to follow DG underscore JAE if you don't speak Japanese. Jay is the English commentator for Dragon Gate, but when there's a show without commentary, he often translates or summarizes major storylines and promos. You should also follow Dragon Gate's English Twitter, Dragon Gate EN, which posts show cards and announcements. Okay, that's the short version. So here's a quick Dragon Gate Network user's guide. Under the menu, you've got a live page with the newest live streaming program. The live catch-up page features the most recent programs that haven't been taken down for editing yet, and upcoming streaming links, while the information page contains video announcements for upcoming events and monthly schedules. The competition page is where the archives are, and it's divided into several categories, like Infinity Episodes divided by year, or English commentary shows only, and there's even a category for old Toriumon content in Clipped Digest episodes. The match page has featured matches, or sometimes alternate camera views from specific shows. This includes the Dragon Gate Future series, where you can check out the new class rookies just coming out of the dojo before they develop their characters and join units. The original programs page has content filmed and posted by Dragon Gate wrestlers and staff outside of their shows. There's some fun stuff here, but it's by no means essential. Dragon Gate Studio hasn't been updated since before the pandemic, but it used to be the site of Prime Zone, a small venue show where they would experiment with new material and have matches that weren't on the main cards. If you prefer Japanese commentary, you'll hear sports commentator Katsuya Ichikawa calling the action. On the English stream, you'll hear Jay Church. Jay used to run iHeartDG, which was pretty much the only English-language Dragon Gate results page on the internet for many years. His commentary partner is usually Ho Ho Lun, who is from Hong Kong and has wrestled all over the world and speaks several languages. When Ho Ho Lun has a match, Jay has a litany of Dragon Gate wrestlers as special guests who speak English with varying levels of fluency, but all of whom are absolutely delightful, especially Takashi Yoshida. Shut up! Yoshihiro Asai, better known as Ultimo Dragon, formed the Lucha Libre promotion Toriumon in Mexico, which had a working relationship with WCW and shared talents to their cruiserweight division. He then formed Toriumon Japan in 1999 to bring Lucha Libre back to Japan, Japan, and to focus on smaller and faster junior heavyweights who often aren't at the top of the card in other promotions. In 2004, Ultimo Dragon departed the company USA. and wrestled for WWE before heading back to Mexico. Toriumon Japan was renamed Dragon Gate, a translation of Toriumon, and their top star Shima started handling the booking end of the company. From 2009 to 2015, Dragon Gate spun off into Dragon Gate USA and Dragon Gate UK, but there have been three major eras in the main company. Toriumon from 1999 to 2004, Dragon Gate from 2004 to 2018, and Dragon Gate Japan Pro Wrestling from 2018 to present time, after another major shift in the company. This third present era resulted from Dragon Gate's close working relationship with Chinese promotion OWE. But when a corporate split happened, Shima left for OWE and brought several young talents with him. You might have seen them in early AEW as Stronghearts before they settled in the Glate promotion. So the whole company underwent a corporate restructure, and in 2019, Ultimo Dragon finally returned after a 15 year absence. Perfect. Toriumon's first singles title was the NWA World Welterweight Championship, one of the eight belts that had previously made up the J-Crown in the late 90s. 
It was replaced by the Ultimo Dragon Gym Championship in 2003, but that belt only lasted for about a year before Ultimo Dragon left, and was replaced in 2004 by the Open the Dreamgate Championship in Dragon Gate. The champion's name is etched onto a metal plate that's locked behind a gate. Challengers earn keys to unlock the belt, and if they win, they can literally open the Dream Gate and replace their name inside. But if the challenger fails, there's a rail on the front of the belt where the champion hangs all of their defeated challenger keys as trophies. Toriyaman's mid-card belt was the British Commonwealth Junior Heavyweight Championship from Michinoku Pro, which was also one of the J-Crown belts. But after a title defense went to a no contest in late 2003, it was deactivated. The Open the Brave Gate Championship has a weight limit of 83 kilos, but occasionally they ignore that rule because it's essentially the mid-card title. Toriyaman didn't use tag titles, but Dragon Gate originally used the International Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Championships from the defunct WAR promotion, before introducing the new Twin Gate belts and unifying the titles in 2007. But in 2010, WAR's successor promotion Tenryu Project once again split them off. Toriyaman had initially revived the UWA World Trios Championship from the defunct Mexican promotion Universal Wrestling Association. They were replaced in Dragon Gate with the new Open the Triangle Gate belts in 2004, but because there are three of them, and because Dragon Gate is heavily focused on Lucha Libre, the three belts are more symbolic and represent unit supremacy in the company. Dragon Gate uses Lucha tag rules. If the legal man is inside the ring, traditional tags are still used, but if the legal man leaves the ring or is thrown outside, it counts as a tag and their partner can immediately enter instead. There used to be another belt called the Owarai Gate Championship, but it was retired in 2018, but you'll still see at least one comedy match on most cards. The major events in Dragon Gate mostly run from March to December. The first annual event is Champion Gate in Osaka, which is held the first week of March. It's usually a smaller show, but it's a two-night event where all championship belts in the company are defended. The final week of March has Memorial Gate in Wakayama, which is a larger show and is usually main evented by one or more big title matches. Dead or Alive is usually on May 5th and is the biggest spring show which always takes place in Aichi, Nagoya. This show's name is synonymous with an insane cage match which features all kinds of convoluted rules that change from year to year and involve multiple units, though occasionally it's moved to another show if the booking makes more sense there. King of Gate is not a pay-per-view, but an annual tournament that runs from May to June across several shows. Depending on the year, it's either single elimination or round-robin block style similar to New Japan's G1 Climax. The winner gets an Open the Dreamgate title shot at the biggest event of the year. And that event is Kobe Pro Wrestling Festival, also known as Kobe World, due to the name and location of the venue. This is the big summer event at the end of July, and in recent years it's been a two-night event. One night featuring the main show and title matches that the year's been building up to, and one night featuring a specific theme, like 2021's Masato Yoshino Retirement Match, or 2022's Ultimo Dragon 35th Anniversary. After that, there's a bit of space for the fallout from the big event, and the next big one is Dangerous Gate in late September. It's always in Tokyo, and there's usually a major Dreamgate title defense in the main event. If the title changed hands at Kobe World, this is usually the new champion's first big test. Gate of Origin is more of a floating event. It's often main evented by a big Triangle Gate title defense, and it's always held in Sendai. Gate of Destiny is the first week of November, and it's always in Osaka. It's typically the biggest autumn show and usually features a big title defense for every belt, with number one contender matches usually being a big part of the build-up. Lastly, the final gate is held in late December as sort of a year-end season finale, and it's always held in Fukuoka. There's almost always a big Dream Gate title defense and one or more other title matches. Dragon Gate's official website is run by Gaura, and it contains all of the roster pages, current champions, title histories, and a bunch of other information. The unit lineups change fairly frequently, so I won't go into full detail here. You can pretty much jump in any time and just learn the roster, but there are a few natural points to jump in because a lot of unit breakups and reformations tend to happen at the same times. For all of 2020, the roster was separated into only three units. For 2021, if you haven't checked out my series on the epic battle between Masquerade and R.E.D. yet, most of that happened in that era and was the biggest story of the year. And for 2022, there's a good natural starting point from January to February because two units disbanded and two others formed out of it. And then these guys left and these guys joined. Otherwise, you could just watch Kobe World in the summer and go forward from there. But since the roster is always in flux, keep an eye on this channel and I'll plan to keep adding changes as they come. And I highly recommend the weekly Open the Voice Gate podcast on Voices of Wrestling. They're pretty consistently the biggest source of Dragon Gate information, where major wrestling news sources like The Observer only sporadically cover Dragon Gate or don't get their details straight. I'm going to be posting other content as well, both wrestling and non-wrestling, but if you just want the Dragon Gate stuff, I'll be keeping all of that material in this one playlist. So thanks for watching, give me a like and subscribe, and stay tuned.